Welcome to Neck Bandage Application presented by Shaky Paws. So the next bandage we're going to do in our bandaging series is going to be a neck wrap. The materials you're going to need are your bandage scissors, vet wrap, cling or elastic gauze, cast padding, non-porous tape, and a little talpa pad that you've cut into a smaller square with a little notch in it. Now some of the reasons we're going to do a neck bandage is to cover a wound or to secure a jugular catheter or a central line. So the first step is this area should be nice and sterile from placement of the triple lumen. Um, and then you're going to take your little telfa pad here, which is a non-adherent bandage primary layer put a little bit of antibiotic and then simply place it around the triple lumen. That's going to help keep everything nice and clean and sterile for us. Ideally when placing this on a triple lumen, not necessarily just a wound, you're going to make sure that you're using sterile gloves and sterile bandaging material. So for neck wrap, remember it is not a pressure wrap. You're going to go around the neck being extremely conscientious of pressure. You don't want to apply any sort of pressure. Sometimes if you have a patient that has a coagulopathy you may want to place a pressure bandage. If you do that you need to go ahead and place a ton of cast padding to ensure that you're not strangulating the patient. Alright, the next layer is going to be our gauze or our cling. Now, of course, our last layer or tertiary layer is going to be our vet wrap. Now you can go ahead, if your vet wrap is just a little bit too large, cut a little notch in here to help not make your bandage quite so bulky. And as you can see I'm making squares not lines on the vet wrap still crossing over just like I would any other bandaging but making sure it is not a pressure wrap. Now with this, now we've got this flopping around. That doesn't really help us too much. What I like to do to help secure it and to keep it out of the patient's face as well as preventing them from vomiting on it because this needs to stay really, really sterile. I'll go ahead and take each one of these ports, making sure I can still identify them. I'm placing them up like so. You need to be able to see the color of the ports when it comes to any sort of bilumen or trilumen, which we have the triple lumen here, so I really do need to see the ports. If it's just a single lumen central line, you're only going to have one port, so it's okay to go ahead and tape the port up. I know this looks a little yucky, but it is securing it to the patient. And if the patient was starting to move around, I might throw another layer on there. But if you don't place these little tabs or they're kind of butterflies on there, they end up slipping through and causing a whole bunch of havoc. Um, if this was a live patient, I'd probably place another layer on there just to cover that up so it's not in the patient's face and annoying them. And that is our neck wrap or neck bandage. Thanks for watching this video and for further information about Shaky Paws, check out the links below.